The book publishing industry is notoriously tumultuous, and it can be all too easy for an aspiring author to get caught up in all of the doom and gloom and bad news in the industry. When you hear about publishing mergers or layoffs or bookstores closing, then you as an author who wants to see your book published can feel discouraged, and I totally understand why. But as we are getting into 2023, there are actually several reasons why I am quite optimistic about the book publishing landscape for this year. So today I want to do a positive, hopefully inspirational and motivating video telling you why I feel good about where the industry is. Hopefully this gives you a fresh perspective on everything that is going on in publishing and makes you feel more encouraged about your options for getting your book on the shelves. This will be especially pertinent for authors who are considering pursuing the traditional publishing route and potentially querying literary agents because my background and expertise is in big five publishing. If you are interested in book publishing, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week, I either post a video with publishing insights like this one, or I talk about some tactical tips for how to strengthen your manuscript, especially if you're working on a book. I also have a free resource for anyone who has a current work in progress. It is called my Story Self-Assessment Worksheet. The link to download it is in the description below, and it is a fun, simple quiz to help you take a new eye to your manuscript and see things in it that maybe you have overlooked areas where you can improve, and areas that are strong points for you as a writer. Downloading that is gonna sign you up for my newsletter where I interview publishing industry experts and successfully published authors, so you don't wanna miss out on all of those amazing tips. If you'd like to go straight to the newsletter, the link is also in the description. So let's kick things off with the first reason why I'm feeling optimistic about book publishing in 2023, which is that two really big industry issues have been resolved at least to some extent. The first relates to the biggest publishing news in recent history, which is the proposed merger of Penguin Random House and Simon and & Schuster. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the details of the merger because I have a whole other video that does so, so I'm gonna link that in the description below. But in short, these are two of the big five publishing houses, and the proposed merger would essentially make the big five into the big four. So there was a trial with the Department of Justice who was looking to block the merger because it was essentially creating a monopoly in the publishing industry. And that merger was successfully blocked. And this news was received really positively throughout the industry. That's because many authors and publishing industry professionals were very concerned about the merger of Simon & Schuster and Penguin Random House because it would essentially make Penguin Random House, which is already the largest publishing house in the US, into an even larger corporation with even more market share over the book publishing industry. They were concerned about a lack of competition, potentially trickling down into lower payments for authors and also less diversity in books being published. So with this blocked merger, we're hopefully seeing a bit of pushback in the industry against this trend towards conglomeration and consolidation, which has been happening over and over throughout the years. Clearly, the Department of Justice and people across the industry see the value in having competition, and it may become more challenging for big publishers to buy out small presses with this precedent. Now, all of this being said, it is true that Paramount, which is Simon & Schuster's parent company, is still trying to sell off Simon & Schuster, so we don't know who might buy it up or if another publishing house might attempt to. We do need to still keep an eye on what happens, but overall the news that the proposed merger was blocked was seen as positive by many in the industry. The second big piece of news, especially at the start of this year, is surrounding the HarperCollins union workers ratifying a new contract. HarperCollins is another one of the big five publishing houses, and they are unique in that some of their employees are unionized, which is not common across the publishing industry. Their union represents over 250 employees across different departments, many of which are in entry-level positions. So they went on strike at the tail end of last year for three whole months, literally picketing outside of the HarperCollins offices in New York City because they were demanding higher pay, more commitment to diversity, and better working conditions, not only for their selves as union employees, but hopefully to kickstart a trend across the industry overall where 
employees, especially lower level employees, are notoriously overworked and underpaid. The ratification of the new contract was an incredible accomplishment because this new contract includes raises to the base salaries across HarperCollins. It gives union workers overtime protections and two additional holidays and a volunteer day, as well as guarantees that they will be compensated for diversity and inclusion work, which is so, so critical in the publishing industry, which is notoriously terrible with diversity. We are already seeing the trickle effects of the union's work in the industry in that other publishing houses have also raised their starting salaries. So as a former publishing house employee, if you don't know, I worked at Random House. This news really resonates with me because I was in the position of having a very low salary, especially for such a high cost of living city. And I was working many, many, many more hours than I was actually being paid for. This makes me very optimistic about what the future of publishing could look like because putting better books out there and supporting authors more comprehensively starts with the publishing house employees being able to do their jobs properly. The next reason why I am optimistic about book publishing in 2023 is because I'm seeing many deal announcements for debut authors. One of the biggest concerns I hear from unpublished authors is that they are never going to get a contract with a traditional publishing house because they've never been published before and publishing houses will only publish authors who have an established track record in their career thus far. That is simply not true. And in 2023 already, we are seeing dozens of deals go to debut authors. I did a search on publishersmarketplace.com, which is the industry database that posts all new deals made in the industry and they have a specific category for debut fiction. And for January and February of 2023, the number of deals for debut fiction was 53. This doesn't even necessarily encompass all of the deals that have been made this year for debut authors because the announcements on Publishers Marketplace tend to be quite delayed. So there are definitely other deals either in the works or that have been signed that are not even reflected in that number. These debut deals were going to authors across many diverse genres, including horror, poetry, historical fiction, short story collections, romance, and contemporary fiction. I was especially excited to see deals going to poets and to short story writers because these are two genres that are notoriously not typically sought out in traditional publishing. In fact, I talk about them in my video about the worst genres for traditional publishing, but clearly certain editors at publishing houses are interested in these genres and those authors are signing book deals, which is very exciting. Now, this number does not include nonfiction books because there's not a specific debut section for nonfiction authors. So again, the number is actually even higher than I'm reporting. Also remember that the 53 deals does not encompass all of the debut authors who have signed with a literary agent this year, but have not yet gone out on submission to publishing houses. Anecdotally, I'm seeing a number of announcements on Twitter where authors are saying that they have signed with a literary agent. And I'm seeing a lot of posts from literary agents simply commenting on the high quality of queries that they are receiving this year. So it really does seem to be a fruitful time for debut authors. I have another video that talks about the pros and cons of being a debut author, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. The final reason why I'm optimistic about book publishing in 2023 is because authors have more resources than ever. Publishing a book has long been an opaque and mysterious and frustrating pursuit, but it really no longer has to be so confusing because there are so many different outlets online for you to get free insights and guidance and advice on how to publish your book, whether you are looking to self-publish or traditionally publish. There is a lot more transparency about the industry and what to expect if you are seeking to publish a book, which is so encouraging for new authors. Some of my favorite places to go for free publishing and writing advice would be the AuthorTube community. Alexa Don is great for traditional publishing and my friend MK Williams is an excellent resource for self-publishing. I have a collab video with her that I'll link in the description below. The book talk community is incredible and continues to grow and really catch fire. BookTok is truly making waves in the industry in terms of driving book sales as well. So if you have any inclination, definitely check it out. There are some amazing content creators who are speaking about 
their own experiences very candidly with querying, with signing with literary agents, with publishing, and with self-publishing. So I'm going to list some of my favorites for you. Kelsey Gonzalez is great, also Chelsea Prince, Diana Urban, and Farah Penn. There are many publishing professionals and authors writing newsletters on Substack, some of which are completely free. Some of my favorites are Before and After the Book Deal by Courtney Mom, Craft with Cat by Cat Lewis, and Agents and Books by literary agent Kate McKean. There are also amazing podcasts about writing and publishing. One of the top is the Shh, No One Tells You About Writing. I'm not sure I can curse on here, so you can fill in the blank. Granted, I don't listen to a ton of podcasts, but I know there are many more out there. Also, Reddit, if you're on Reddit, the subreddit Pub Tips is full of people providing advice and insights. There are also free query critiques on the subreddit. And there are tons of books that you can read about publishing and about writing. I had a video earlier this year about my top five recommended reads, so definitely check that out for some more places to get some tips. Let me know in the comments if you have any other publishing or writing resources that you love, and I would love to check them out. And also let me know if you'd like me to make a whole other video on my recommended publishing and writing resources because I could do a whole 10 minutes just on that. Now to close out this video, I do want to talk about some of the bad news we've got in publishing this year because it's not all rainbows and roses, right? And my purpose with this channel is to truly just tell you how it is, so I don't want to shy away from the bad news if there is some. One piece of news is that HarperCollins did announce that it is laying off 5% of its North American workforce. I know you've heard about layoffs across all types of industries. Publishing had a lot of layoffs last year, so this is an unfortunate piece of news. Second is that the hugely influential literary magazine Catapult announced that it is shuttering not only its magazine, but also its online classes, and it is pivoting just to its book publishing division. This was a huge blow to the literary community because Catapult was so, so highly regarded and it was a home for so many writers, both in terms of workshops and classes and the literary magazine being a place for experimental works and great short stories. Lastly, we are seeing more and more concerns about AI in the publishing industry. This is happening especially with literary magazines, some of which have reported that they're being completely inundated with AI-generated stories, which is not only flooding their inboxes, but making it harder to decipher what was created by an author from scratch and what was created via AI. There are concerns that this is going to trickle into the book publishing industry, and Amazon has already reported that a lot of AI-generated books have been posted on the Kindle platform. And I'm even hearing peeps about people using AI to generate their query letters, so no matter where you stand on AI, it's clear that this is going to be a tricky topic for publishing to navigate in the months and years to come. Regardless of all the bad news, I hope that some of my insights made you feel more optimistic about publishing in 2023. I truly think there is room for your story to be told, and I do not want you to give up or feel discouraged. Let me know in the comments what your writing and or publishing goals are for this year. I I would love to hear where you're at and what you have your heart set on. If you're looking for an overview of your different options for publishing, check out my video on how to publish a book. I talk through traditional publishing versus hybrid publishing versus self-publishing. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't forget your free story self-assessment worksheet and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.